Hello. This week in Indoor Football, a lot of things happened. A lot of things have happened. And um, there's still technically a game going on right now, but it's the CIF, and the CIF has some... Um, we got, we got to talk we got to talk about some things um, with the CIF real quick. Um, officiating, yeah, there were some officials during the Topeka game um, during um, what last weekend. They were heckled by the CIF commissioner J.R. Bond, who owns two teams in the league, um, one of them being Topeka, I think. And Bond decided to heckle these officials. You know, he was cursing them out, doing all sorts of, you know, whatever. Just, just, you know, you know, chewing them out. You know, and the officials, they felt disrespected by this. And they were like, yeah, we're done. And then, turn around, you know, not even a week later, these same officials begged their way back onto the field to officiate a game. They, I believe they officiated the Topeka game last night as... A friend told me, uh, I do not understand what in the world kind of nonsense this is. Because Bond gave himself a suspension, like a three-week suspension or something like that. Like, as, you know, like, as commissioner, I'm not sure if it was either as an owner or as commissioner. But whatever the case may be, I'm just disappointed. Like, again, like, again, I, I thought, you know, CF would be doing a lot better this year, you know, making it to where, you know, I can actually, you know, watch CIF games. The only game I think I have an opportunity to watch for the CIF at this time, because again, the IFL and the NAL take priority over the CIF is uh, Memorial Day, because there's a game on Memorial Day um, that has nothing to do with other IFL teams, I think, has nothing to do with other NAL teams. So, like, the only real opportunity to see the CIF in action is on Memorial Day. And, you know, the CIF network has been absolutely dreadful. You know, there's just one guy running it. And everybody's been begging him and begging him to get, get these things up and running. And, you know, all sorts of different deals and like that. And it's just not working out the way, you know, the CIF network is not working out the way it's supposed to be working out. Um... So again, you know, the controversy with CIF right now is the officiating nonsense. That's been a thing. Um, other than that, you know, like I believe uh, Billings and Sioux City, I believe they're playing right now. So by the time you guys see this, that that game will have started. And so, you know, it is what it is there. Um, I have nothing really to say because I haven't seen any CIF games you know, at all, aside from, like, the preseason games, which I was, again, unimpressed with. So, it is what it is there. Uh, I'll hopefully give myself the opportunity to see more CIF games down the line, but right now, the way the network is, the way things have been going with all these controversies and stuff like that, it's enough for me. It's enough for me. Alright, let's move on. The NAL, they have started their training camps and stuff like that. Some suspensions have been handed out, by the way, as well. Like, again, like, there's some, there's some, there's some guys, you know, that are, like, legit guys getting suspended and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm sitting here completely surprised. If you follow the guys over inside the walls, they have a lot of that good stuff, a lot of that good info on the NAL and, you know, their training camps and stuff like that. Um... You know, so it is what it is there. Uh, that that's about it from the NAL right now. Um, still got to wait a couple more weeks until the season kicks off for the National Arena League, and hopefully we'll have a good long season ahead of NAL football. In the uh, the lower level leagues, before we go to the IFL, I want to get to these. Uh, I want to get to the three other leagues first. Um, the APFL, the Arena Professional Football League. Oh my goodness, this has been a nightmare. You know, reading. You know, the reading Raptors got dropped. Um, the Jersey Ballas, they are nowhere to be found. Like, I look and I can't find them anywhere. Um, you know, they haven't updated their social media since March, you know, like March, like the 15th or something like that. Like, I don't, I don't remember when exactly, but, you know, 
the Charlotte Thunder played the West Michigan Ironmen in a thriller last night um, to open up the APFL season. Remember, Charlotte plays West Michigan four times. So, yeah, those other three additions to the schedule, the Carolina Predators, the Mayor of the Warriors, the Alabama Empire. Uh, if you think, and it, I believe, I think I, I may have said something about it, you know, last week, but, you know, if not, you know, it is what it is, but apparently the APFL added, and I use that in quotations, they added these three teams in, but this is actually not the case. Uh, now, it's, it's going to seem like they add these three teams, but again, Maryland, um, you know, I actually got some confirmation that Maryland wouldn't even be able to play, you know, because they're in another league. Alabama Empire, I had to check myself to see, you know, hey, something's not right here. You know, if they're, if, a, if the APFL is lying and saying, hey, these teams are in our league, this is, this is actually false. Alabama has a full elite indoor football schedule. And by the way, the EIF also started this weekend. So, you know, if that tickles your fancy, you know, but you get the Alabama Empire have a legit schedule. Carolina Predators, we know, have a legit schedule because, you know, they had their home schedule. They, they've had that out for a while. So this is all just a ploy by Charlotte, at least, to make up a schedule. And I, I looked at West Michigan as well. Uh, they have added a home game with the... Uh, with the um, NIF team, Central Illinois, the Royals, who, uh, again, the NIF has been decimated by, you know, all these teams because they had, like, nine teams, and now they've been decimated to the point where they have, like, three teams left, like Kentuckiana, the Curse is still there, and I forgot the other two, and I believe uh, the Chicago Pat, I don't remember exactly who all's in that league anymore, but... Again, this is a bad, bad marketing ploy by the APFL. Again, this is not learning the mistakes of the AL. Not learning the mistakes of the AL. You're not learning. You guys aren't learning anything. And you guys said you were legit. You say you're professional. And you decide to lie and prop this nonsense up. You know, because again, Charlotte, we know Charlotte has money. We know, we know the Charlotte Thunder have things legit. They have, they have some legit stuff. It's just like, this is... This is unacceptable, you know, trying to deceive, and you might as well take those teams off your website. They do not count as league games. These are non-league games. Take those teams off your website right now. In inexplicable type stuff right there. SoCal Red Tails, we found out, you know, a couple weeks ago, it was either last week or a couple weeks ago, that, you know, they lost all their home games because they weren't permitted to play in California, they've been removed from the AWFC entirely. So, other teams are going to have to find some filler games. I'm not sure when. You know, I believe there's like three games. You know, that need to be filled for these other teams right now. And it, it's it's just been it's just been a rough season for the AWFC. Like there was supposed to be six legit teams out west, and there's only four now, and a travel team, and that travel team continues to get whipped every single week you know, the elite they continue to get whipped every single week and I have no idea what's going on outside excuse that uh, and then you know last but not least the Wichita Force they had a couple games scheduled their game against Magnolia um, which was supposed to be the AFA opener that is no longer being played that was no longer going to be played because of a waterline disruption. I believe their second home game has been disrupted as well so they have to move those dates around. I forgot when exactly those games are now but it won't be this week that the AFA kicks off. It'll be next week. So there you go. And in the IFL, you know, lots of good stuff this weekend. We're talking the upset of the century in my opinion. Well, not the upset of the century. The upset of the season so far in which the strike force of San Diego somehow come back, beat Tucson, you know, Green Bay still, they they fought, they fought hard, but they lost to my Frisco Fighters, Massachusetts beat Bismarck, and then, you know, um, Arizona still doing their thing, like they whipped up, you know, 
it would up on Vegas, I think. I forgot already. And then, you know, uh, Duke City, they played a they played a good game. They played a damn good game with Delo Davis because I thought originally, you know, that Delo Davis, you know, he like he got released. Now he's back on Duke City. He's playing well. I know the Nate Davis situation may not be resolved as quickly as everyone thought. I believe they said on the broadcast that he has like an ACL tear and he's done for the year. But I'll have to triple check that um, because, you know, like they said it on the broadcast, but I, 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 I could have sworn, you know, that it was supposed to be a, like a two to three week thing and it's not anymore. So that's kind of rough if that is the case. And then I forgot what the other IFL game was. Uh, I believe it was uh, Sioux Falls. I believe they lost. Yeah, they lost Quad City. Yeah, that was crazy. So, um, IFL still doing their thing. Massachusetts still has that winning streak again. I thought for a second there, if you just finished that game, we just finished watching that. You know, a lot of us, you know, that are coming over from that game, maybe to here, you know, if you're watching this, you know, like about, a, like about 30 to 45 minutes after that game ended. Uh, you know, Massachusetts still has that winning streak, like carried over 13 game winning streak. Um, it's going to be an interesting week in the IFL, so, you know, um, all throughout next weekend, Friday, Saturday, uh, I believe Sunday, and then Monday as well. You know, no, I actually, no, it's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Monday. I forgot, I believe that Sunday is Easter Sunday for some reason, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, there you go. There you go, everybody. So that's it. For this week in indoor football, I have nothing else really to say. I'll see you all later tonight. Um, NBA, got to talk about the regular season and stuff like that. Got to talk about you know my thoughts on the regular season. And then I'll shift up that lacrosse video. That will be um, in the afternoon tomorrow. So, you know, I have a lot to say about some lacrosse right now. So, you know. I'll see you all then, and then Thursday, 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 USFL Week 1 preview. I cannot wait to talk about the USFL. Uh, I know we just talked about the USFL in an impromptu video not too long ago, like a couple days ago, but I'm, I'm excited to talk about Week 1 of the USFL. So can't wait to see you all throughout this week, and take care. Have a good week.